Hello and welcome to our session titled Making Meaning of Math with Manipulatives in Grades K through 5. My name is Yuka Walton. I'm a third grade teacher at Bret Hart Elementary School in the Bayview. Hi, I'm Noam. I'm in the uh, math department supporting elementary schools and we're really uh, glad that you're here listening to this presentation. All right, so in today's agenda, we just did the welcome and our introductions. Uh, next, I'm going to go into the why behind our session and why we think it's um, needed in this distance learning setting. Uh, we will not be doing a connector because of this virtual format, but we will move into the math activity which follows the launch, explore, and summarize structure in, uh, that's featured in the elementary SFUSC math curriculum. And lastly, we'll be uh, providing time to and ways to explore manipulatives and uh, uh, a way for folks to ask us questions via email if you have any. Okay, one more thing, Yuka. Yes. If you're watching this video on your own and there's a possibility to watch it with a colleague, we really recommend that because then when we get to the part where you explore the manipulatives, you can do the activity with your colleague. Exactly, yes. Alrighty, so our why. Um, I want to share a little story about what it was like to do crisis teaching in the spring. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm a third grade uh, teacher at Bret Hart Elementary School. And so when we started in the spring, I was like, all right, here we go. Like, let's get some manipulatives going. Um, and so I was having students count fraction strips on toy theater, and I was having students count um, fractions on the number line on Math Learning Center's number line. And on Seesaw, I was having them do different area activities. Um, and you know, all these sites have really great manipulatives for students to use, uh, but I still wasn't able to provide access to the learning for all of my students. Um, like every day I just felt like I still had a few kids who were just really lost and not engaged in the sense making. And every day I was like, okay, well maybe I'll get them tomorrow. Like maybe it's gonna work tomorrow. Um, but you know, it still was the same situation where they still weren't able to access that learning and show off their brilliance because I was still setting up those same structures. Um, and so when we finished the semester, I was hopeful to go back to our own physical classrooms because I know how to create access and rigor in my own classroom when I'm in person with kids. And so I was like, oh, well, thank goodness we don't have to distance um, teach anymore. Uh, but then midway through summer, it became apparent that, you know, we would have to continue distance teaching. And so I really needed to push myself to grapple with, you know, what was not, what was I doing that wasn't providing access and rigor to all of my students in the online setting? And so to really reflect on that question, I thought about, hmm, like, how do I create access and rigor in my physical classroom in person? And so when I really thought about that this summer and talking with Noam and hearing ideas from our other colleague, Jamie, I realized that um, students collaborating together and working in groups is how I create access and rigor in my classroom, right? That's how, that's the equity work that I take up every day with my kids. So that helped me realize that although these manipulatives are all amazing, Toy Theater, Math Learning Center, Seesaw, they all have really great interfaces um, and they all allow kids to interact with math. What's the downside of these versions is that they don't have a way for students to collaborate together, which was really the piece that I think would create the access and the rigor. So um, the whole focus of our presentation is how we think Google Slide manipulatives are actually the best way to go. Uh, manipulatives via Google Slides allow for students to collaborate together. Right, so it's going to create that access and rigor. It's going to allow students to discuss together. It's going to allow students to sense make together the way they would in our physical classrooms. Um, we also think Google Slides are great because they can be customized for the specific task or for your specific set of students. So as you can see on this side over here, we have a hundreds chart with um, counters. And the way that this chart first started, there was no arrows. And Noam and I were talking one day and I was like, you know, it'd be kind of cool to have some arrows on this chart. And Noam was like, okay. So um, later in our presentation, we'll share a video where you can learn how to, um, you know, kind of make what looks like an infinite set of one type of manipulative so kids can pull it off and there's still some left in the stack. We'll also show you um, other ways to be able to edit these and modify them so that they're customized for the specific task you're trying to do or for your students. Um, another modification we did was making it so that these numbers, you can delete them. And so, you know, it's just, there's so many, like, if you can think it, you can make it happen on a Google slide, right? So 
uh, Google side manipulatives are great because they can be so customizable. So given that it's collaborative and it's customizable, we really think that this is what's gonna create equitable access and rigor for all kids in the distance learning math setting. So for our outcomes for today's session, um, we want folks to experience using Google Slides for collaborative mathematical sense making with manipulatives. Um, we want folks to participate in the lesson with a launch, explore, and summarize um, structure, the one that's featured in our elementary math curriculum. Uh, but experience that in a setting that's adapted to being online. And of course, we want to provide folks with time to explore manipulative resources. Uh, this uh, is our set of math norms. Those of you who are familiar with our elementary math curriculum know these math norms well. Uh, they are present throughout the curriculum and we think that these um, support students to make sense together and discuss together as they're doing the math. And I'm gonna hand it over to Noam. All right, thank you, Yuka. So Yuka really set the, the, lay the foundation for why we're doing this. And now we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it together. And um, what we're gonna, the way we're gonna do this is to sort of step through uh, a task in the math curriculum. This one's called Kites. It's from the first grade curriculum. And think about how we would present it to students and when we get to the explore part, then you will hopefully stop the video and explore the manipulatives yourself. So in the uh, SFUSD math core curriculum, all our lessons are um, have a three parts, a launch and explore and a summarize. And the purpose of the launch is to uh, get students into the task and to uh, help them make sense of whatever it is they're doing, in this case, the problem that they're solving. So that's where we use the three read protocol that I'll step you through. The next part of the task is the explore, and that's where you'll be uh, participating in collaborative groups to solve the problem with the online tools that we're sharing. And the last part is the summarize, and that's where the students talk to each other about the work they did, connect each group's work to the other group's work and to the important math of the lesson. So without further ado, we're going to launch this, lesson, this uh, problem. It's called Kites. The first read, which I'm not going to do with you because you're watching a video about it, is just reading the problem out loud. Typically, the teacher reads it out loud. And then the teacher asks, what is this story about? So this story is Mr. Brown has a kite store at Pier 39. There are 15 kites in the store, and he sold six kites on Saturday. So in the first read, you talk about what it's about. Second read, you read the problem again. And this time you ask students, what are the quantities in the situation? And um, you can see on the next slide that students would typically say that in this situation, there are 15 kites and he sold six kites and there are 39 peers. They might talk about one kite store. There are all kinds of quantities they'll come up with. Next slide will be the third read. And in this read, uh, you would once again read the story aloud or have the kids chorally read it. And in this read, you start thinking about what are the mathematical questions that can be asked about the situation. So questions that kids would typically come up with, kids and adults for this question, for this problem is, how many kites did he have left after he sold six? How many kites did he sell on Sunday? How many peers are there? So what we're gonna do for our task is we're gonna solve that first question, how many kites are left? Again, this is a first grade problem. So on the next slide, you'll see numbers that would make it more amenable to a third grader. Um, th these are not probably real, prob real numbers that would happen at Kite Store at Pier 39, but um, we're gonna ask you if you teach third through fifth grade to solve this problem, and if you teach K through two to solve the previous problem. So once you uh, get to the sol problem solving part, which I'll explain to you how to do in a moment, you're gonna decide with your partner uh, which manipulative slide to use first, and then you're gonna take turns. One of you will move the manipulatives and explain to the other person or people what you're doing, and then they'll ask you questions and agree or disagree, and then the other person will take a turn. So you're gonna collaboratively, by turn taking, solve a problem using one manipulative. And then you can go on and explore a different manipulative. There are quite a few manipulatives available to you in these slides. If you are working on this with uh, two or more people, 
go ahead and choose a role to make sure that you're all participating and all contributing and all learning. So the team captain would make sure that everyone takes a turn and they would ask whose turn it is. The resource manager would help everyone ask questions until ideas make sense and ask, does anyone have questions for our friend? And the facilitator would help your team talk about each other's thinking and, and say things like, can you say more about that? So if you are, uh, going to work on these slides, which you must do, or this presentation is not going to make sense at all. Your next step is going to be to pause this video, go to that bit.ly link, choose either the K2 folder or the 345 folder, and choose one of the slide decks from that folder, and then work on the problem that we've just described. So we'll see you when you come back from working on the problem on these slides. Yuka, do you have anything to add before they pause the video and do that? Okay, so now, 15 minutes later, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed working on the slides. You, if you are a K2 teacher, you probably worked on slides that looked like this and you probably did work that is similar to this. Um, in the classroom, what, uh, we would typically ask kids, we would shoot, select a few pieces of student work, put them all together, and then ask kids, what are the similarities between these representations? What are the differences between these representations? Which tools were most useful to show the situation? And then the next slide shows what the summary would look like for 3-5. So if you're with a colleague, I would go back and forth and do this with each of these slides. Talk about the differences, talk about the similarities, talk about how the tools were useful more or less to show the situation and then the next slide would be a summary again this is these are questions that we would work on with our kids and the questions are how did watching other people work with a tool help you understand the problem better you may have been inclined to naturally go with the base 10 blocks and then you watched your colleague work on the number line and you might have learned something new about this, this problem that you didn't think of before. And then talk to your colleague what was hard about taking turns, what was helpful about it. And even if you're doing this presentation alone, you'll want to think about those questions because they will help you think about how you're going to do this with your kids. And speaking of doing this with your kids, Yuka is going to take over now for the last few slides. It would help if I unmuted. <laughs> In closing, um, we would love folks to think about this question. How would collaboratively using manipulatives on Google Slides help your students understand the mathematics? Um, let me plug in my computer so it doesn't die. Give me one second. Um, and so what we hope for you to see is that um, these Google Slides allow students to work together and discuss, which is the core of what we hope to do in our math classrooms in person, right? So it's like the Google Slides are allowing us to um, facilitate that type of discussion and collaboration and use of manipulatives online as well. Um, and the second question we have is, what would you need to do to help your students be successful with this? Um, so take a moment to think about that. Some suggestions we have to answer that question are you might want to consider doing groups of two rather than groups of three at the beginning of the year. Uh, it depends on your group of students what you think is the best size group for them to start with. Uh, it could also help to teach keyboard shortcuts like control C for copy, control V for paste and undo. Um, teaching those could help kids who are maybe having difficulty dragging the manipulatives out um, to like use their keyboard to make commands happen. Um, and you have to think about how you're pushing out these slide decks. Are, are you pushing them out via Google Classroom? Are you pushing them out to a folder that people are, uh, your students are accessing? I think there's so many different ways for you to do that, and that's a choice that you want to make for yourself. Uh, we definitely want to provide time for students to explore the manipulatives first. So, you know, if it was the first time ever a kids are using a certain type of manipulative on the Google slide deck, I would provide time just for play 
no task, um, just to explore and make sense of the manipulatives and how they work before jumping into a math task. And um, we can continue to modify the manipulative slides to suit the specific needs of the, your group of students or the specific task you're trying to do. So now in this section, we wanna take time to explore um, the different types of manipulatives. One option, I wanna exit out of this. So there's a couple options here from this slide deck. One option is Noam made this amazing screencast video of how to actually customize the slides yourself um, and how to make it so that it looks like all the manipulatives are in this like infinite death that never runs out. Um, and so you could watch this video and uh, learn how to customize the slides for yourself. You can also um, uh, explore the other uh, manipulatives on the slide deck. So right here we have the full deck of slides. This is like the full bank. Uh, if it will load on my computer, uh, maybe it won't. Um, there we go. And so you might want to, if you were doing the K2 group, you might have missed a lot of the manipulatives that are in the 3-5 group. So you might want to take time to just scroll through the full deck um, and see what could be useful for you um, with your students in the grade that you teach. Another option is to go to this uh, Google Sheet here which, um, how do I get back to the, here we go. This is the main page. So this is a great Google Sheet that Noah made that helps folks uh, explore the different types of virtual manipulatives. There's four ways to explore the sheet. This section right here is by website. So the core websites that have math manipulatives that we recommend are the Math Learning Center. Love these, these are great. They have a great base 10 one where the blocks can actually like separate, like you have a 10 rod and it separates into 10 ones. So although um, this isn't like the Google setting where kids can collaborate, it still is a useful app to explore, even for kids to do individually. Um, there's also Toy Theater, which is another um, great site for manipulatives, Class Playground, Didax, and Seesaw. Um, so again, this section here is to explore manipulatives by website. This section here is to explore manipulatives by type. So as you can see, the main types of manipulatives are listed and you can click there. And um, this section here is to explore manipulatives by math domain. So by the Common Core State Standard Math Domain. So again, these manipulatives in this top section are all manipulatives that students would mostly use individually. There is no collaborative setting for these manipulatives, but they still are great um, interfaces for the students to use. The more collaborative ones, the link is down here and the previous deck that I was just showing you. Um, the collaborative ones are only available via Google Slides. There are not other manipulatives where students can collaborate. And so I'm going to go back to the deck. Uh, and so I guess the very last thing we have is uh, if you have questions, uh, please don't hesitate to email Noam. I unfortunately will be classroom, not unfortunately, I'm very happy to be classroom teaching, but that means I don't have a ton of time to answer your questions. So uh, Noam has kindly uh, offered to answer any questions you may have. So feel free to reach out to him if you have questions. And Noam, did you want to say anything in closing? Well, I want to thank everyone for who is watching this, and I hope it was useful. And uh, can you go back one slide, Yuka? Just that the slides for today's deck, I think they were in another slide as well, but tinyurl.com slash mmmm dash slides. That is uh, um, the URL to get all the slides so that you can click on these instead of just knowing that they're out there. Perfect. Alrighty, thank you everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a bye great bye. school year. Yeah, have a wonderful school year. Bye bye. Amen.